town of Salem is coming out with a sequel, and aliens are invading your backyard slash farm in this edition of Indie Gaming News. <laughs> That's the sound of gaming news. <laughs> Before we get to the news though, you know what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about this week's sponsor and that's Wayward. Wayward is an early access wilderness survival roguelite, Ooh, lucky terms, with challenging turn-based and top-down gameplay. Explore, build, and most importantly, survive in these unforgiving lands. You'll have four island types featuring unique content for each biome, and character progression depends on individual skill and stat gains, which is done through your interactions with items or objects in the world. While Wayward is a permadeath roguelike, you can customize the game to allow respawning or casual mode, as well as overall tweaking of the difficulty, and Great! Awesome! We love options and tweaking difficulty as a hater of too hard games myself. With over 630 items, over 25 skills, and more than 50 creatures and animals to combat with, harvest, or tame, this world offers an abundance of survival gameplay goodness. You'll also be getting your bang for your buck with Wayward, which offers over 25 hours of content and gameplay before reaching the end. And that isn't even taking into account the supplemental content, which could easily take hundreds of hours. Wayward offers a multiplayer mode where up to 32 players can fight together, so you can survive or die in good company. <laughs> Or maybe partake of some PvP and show your friends who the real elitist gamer is. If you're a fan of games like Unreal World, Cataclysm, Dark Days Ahead, or Dwarf Fortress, you're sure to find plenty of similar fun in this indie title. And most recently, Wayward has just come out with a major update titled Beacon's Call with plenty of content for you to enjoy. This newest update adds features like ports and lighthouses for faster travel, wooden bookcases to hold your bonus subscribing, subscribing, coño su mierda madre, okay. Wooden bookcases to hold your bonus subscribing books, tamed creature commands that unlock new behaviors, a magical golem creature, and added creature tooltip information to name just some of the many new things that are in this update. So if Wayward sounds intriguing and fun to you, check it out on Steam using the link in our description. Thank you again to Wayward for sponsoring this episode! For our first bit of indie gaming news, you'll be shooting trespassing party city looking aliens in the face for this indie, and that's Grey Hill Incident. It's labeled as a survival horror game, but the trailer is nothing short of comedy gold. From the mindless, auto-pathing gait of these black jumpsuit-clad aliens, to the priest proclaiming them to be angels of God, there's no way this was meant to be serious. This next bit of indie news was a delightful surprise for me personally, and that's the approaching release of Town of Salem 2. Town of Salem 2 is a social deduction game a la werewolf, where you try to kill the town or save it based on your randomly assigned role. All of this is done through open discussions of the community, with everyone having different roles that can help them get clues, if they're lucky and strategic about it. I adored the original free-to-play Town of Salem, and I have many fond memories of being an absolute shithead, typing nonsense into the chat as 12 strangers try to pin murders on each other. It was wonderful. <laughs> Embrace the chaos on May 26th. Another exciting indie game to keep an eye on is Return, a dystopian and difficult RPG. Play an astronaut returning home after 200 years in space. How is he this old? Whatever. Anyway. <laughs> And when you arrive home, you promptly begin searching for ship repair items to leave this monster-infested world behind again. Shoot, slash, and roll your way through enemies and bosses that will test your skills. Hence the whole difficult part. I must say, the Risk of Rain-like art style lures me in, 
but I'm very hesitant with the emphasis on its difficulty. For news, that breaks my rule of discussing future indies only, but I'ma break it all I want! We've got local news with Cliff Rockside, which just released on the Nintendo Switch. Fulfill your dreams of becoming a local newscaster. Except you've only got seven subscribers from your quiet little town. This first person comedy adventure game has an endearing retro aesthetic, a silly premise, and how could I resist epic reporting? If your silliness quota hasn't been reached yet, try Banana Guy. I may not like bananas in real life because they're gross and disgusting and you can fight me in the streets about it. I appreciate banana themed adventures and platforming. This tooth-achingly cute indie is already out, and it has a myriad of delightfully designed areas to peel and slip about. Also, I just love the theme song for the trailer, it's so light and whimsical, and I hope more music like that will accompany players on their potassium pilgrimage. Finally, for an indie coming out sometime in July, we have Udo. Udo? Or unidentified drilling object. This 2D side-scrolling platformer has down-well vibes, except colorful! My child brain loves colors. And the movement looks quite smooth as you drill the ground and the enemies around you while exploring side passages you discover on the way. Udo might shape up to be a neat experience in this burgeoning drill-focused genre. Congrats, Muddinheads! You have reached the end of this video, which makes you a part of the VIP Indie Gaming League. Now, shame and stupefy the non-believers with a comment. Or just tell me if you thought any of the games look cool. <laughs> Enjoy your day and sleep more, otherwise you will slowly die. Thank you so much for supporting clickbait free independent content here on YouTube. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe to help us bring a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming and be sure to check out patreon.com slash I dream of indie games where we can together defeat the gaming echo chamber.